I have around me here five meters of beautiful Technicolor. This is a uh, five meter NeoPixel uh, strip. It's something I picked up last week, and I've just been taking a look at some of the uh, kind of power requirements because this uh, 150 LEDs in here, and it draws uh, quite a bit of power. I've got the LED strip kind of hooked up here on the floor. At one end, I've got a Teensy 3.1. This is a Arduino esque board, just a little bit more powerful, a bit more versatile. I've, in the past, I've used uh, little kind of trinkets with this board, but they're not capable of driving 150 LEDs. I've got about 120 to 130 before it kind of cut out, ran out of memory. Whereas this uh, seems quite happy to kind of run up to that level. I've got that rigged up to this bench power supply here, and I'm going to just turn that on now. And I've been having a few issues. So this is what I've been experiencing. You power on the power supply and it runs straight through. It ends with a couple of lights and cuts out. And this repeatedly happens. It doesn't really get any further. And I think this is due to a kind of power, power issues kind of browning out with the amount of current. When you first flick this strip on, admittedly they're all, they're all off, but they all like, briefly kind of flick on, and that is enough to screw up the processor and stop this from happening. There's, uh, there's one or two other reports of this out there, but um, there's no obvious solution, at least not that I could find. And so I've been taking a look at other options. And so this is uh, hooked up to the power supply here. And what I've found, this um, the kind of current control on this supply is very dodgy. And it kind of quite happily just kind of cuts out. And so what I've found is if I gradually feed this in, let's see here, so I'm slowly turning this up. Every time I touch it, it kind of jitters and it resets. But it'll reach one point where, or if I kind of, get it just right, it does run at a low power and then I can gradually increase the current. So yeah, I think this is now functioning. So that is now up and running. As you can see it's uh, kind of current limiting on here. It's cutting this voltage down to quite a low level. I can then ramp up the current limit and the voltage returns to normal. And so I can deliver around about two and a half amps here. And for most of the light sequences it works, except for when it's all white. When everything goes white, it, it, all the lights are on kind of full power and obviously it draws a little bit more than you're kind of seeing there and the voltage dips a little bit. But thankfully everything carries on running uh, because there's, they all have a fairly kind of wide voltage range. And, uh, and so that's, um, it's a little weird, and certainly it's not something that um, I'm going to be able to do, kind of ramping this up. Unfortunately, when I went to try and investigate um, this setup and kind of take a look at the power line here and see what was going on, it, um, I ran into kind of some ground, uh, grounding issues between the oscilloscope I've got here and the power supply. There's a couple of volts between the ground terminals on both which means I can't hook this up to measure. It's kind of causing issues. So what I've been doing for testing is hooking this up to a battery supply. And so I've got a little um, uh, kind of couple of amp power supply here that can run off of a lithium battery pack. And I'm substituting that for the bench power supply and that's allowing me to kind of properly take a look at what's going on. So I'm just going to switch that over now. I'm now running on battery power. I've got the meter here showing the voltage coming out of the voltage regulator. This is the current uh, the system is drawing. And I'm taking a look here. The two traces are the, it's the input voltage and the voltage at the other end of the five meter strip. Now this uh, strip here, it does, um, it has got quite a large amount of internal resistance and the voltage does drop across it. I'm saying as it's pulling such a high current through. You see, these are all on the same scale here, and it's almost a, a volt difference between the two. 
the uh, the strip also has a lot of capacitors on it, so it is smoothing out the the input supply, and it's pulling quite a lot of power from this uh, little kind of switching regulator. And so you can see the kind of uh, um, zoom in there. You've got the square or the triangle wave, what's left of the, the the noise from that switching converter when it kind of settles down a bit. You'll be able to see on the top trace. The output trace then kind of is fairly stable, just a, a volt or so lower. And I see there the varying light patterns does have uh, quite an impact on this. At the moment, it's just running through um, a kind of a random sequence. Now it's starting through again. You can see this is a fairly kind of high current draw sequence here, and the highest current draw is about to start. So it expects a little dip. And we go, even the input voltage is now dropping. It's back to regular mode again, and so these strips here, as you might can see, the end is terminated. Um, they're designed to be kind of coupled one to another, and they also break out kind of power connections here. And so, I think when I set this up, I'm going to try and power it uh, at both ends just to improve that its performance. So the the as, uh, depending on what the power supply I use, if it does dip or drop. This way, the the end LEDs won't um, kind of suffer as a result, potentially losing the data that's coming into them. And uh, I'm just going to reset the sequence here again. You can see this input current here. At this moment, it's ramping through kind of the color light up sequence, and it's running through kind of a blue, and it's about to start white. And you can see how the current is going to spike. It kind of reaches around about three and a half amps. And now that is the, the highest current draw this will experience, and this is all of the LEDs on in white mode. And I'll just uh, see my second, I'll show you that again. It's this sequence here, which is one of the default uh, sketches that comes with the library, and it's just looping through. And then it switches into. Uh, Random mode again, and so unfortunately, I I can't see why the the original power supply was browning out, uh, why it was kind of glitching like that. And um, in the end, when I'm running this, I'm gonna need to find a high current five volt power supply, and um, at least kind of four amps, I'd say, to kind of power this thing, and to kind of have it up and running. And I'm hoping I'll need to. I'm hoping kind of powering is not going to be too difficult. It'll need to be some kind of uh, soft start system in here. Some method of ensuring that the, uh, the microcontroller doesn't uh, dip at all, ensuring that it retains a kind of a constant power feed uh, so it doesn't go and lock up, which I assume is the initial problem. So this is uh, unfortunately slightly unsatisfying as I haven't been able to get to the bottom of it, but still quite a uh, an interesting strip when I finally figure out uh, I'll get that rigged up and hopefully try and get to the bottom of the power issues. I do have a, a mains isolator which I can use to solve the grounding issue and that should allow me to do a kind of a proper investigation to find out what was wrong.